Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. I am going to be changing the timing chains on this Suzuki Sidekick. This is a 98 Sidekick Sport. It has the Suzuki 1.8 liter engine in it. That is a J-Series engine. And this timing chain replacement will be very similar to other J-Series engines, the J20 and J23, the 2 liter and 2.3 liter respectively. There are some differences with the J23, the 2.3 liter, but should be pretty small differences. Now I would like to say that this is not exactly a how-to video because I'm not an expert with these Suzuki engines. I have never actually done the timing chains in one of these Suzuki engines, but more of a chance for me to share my experience with you. And if you have to do this job, hopefully you can learn from my experience. So very often timing chains will last the lifetime of a vehicle. Um, the timing chain on this sidekick though is having some issues and I'm told that this timing chain was just replaced less than 2,000 miles ago. But you can clearly see that this is having some issues. It is very loose on here and it's so loose that this top chain uh, guide that's supposed to be right here actually got snapped off by the chain and I found it flipped back right there inside uh, on top of the cylinder head. I'm really lucky it didn't uh, fall down there like that because that would have caused some really bad problems. Um, so I'm going to get this, all this stuff out of the way, all these accessories, pulleys, the radiator fan shroud, maybe the radiator, I don't know yet. Um, but I'll clear all this stuff out of the way and we'll see what's really going on under there. My replacement timing chain kit uh, is an OSK kit made in Japan. Uh, very important on these vehicles from what I've heard to uh, spend the money on the best timing chain kit you can get. And it should say, uh, all the parts should say made in Japan if you want the best quality. Like I said, this is a J18 engine and for your J20, uh, this is the kit S601K uh, from OSK. It's, uh, I think there, there must be a different kit for the 2.3 liter, but again, this whole thing is going to be pretty similar. So I got the timing cover off. Uh, now the reason that I was doing this timing chain and I suspected there was a problem is because this Sidekick Sport uh, would not go over 55 miles an hour. And it would take, it would take almost 30 seconds to get up to 55 miles an hour. Crazy lack of power. And it had a P0300, so a multiple cylinder random misfire. So all the cylinders were randomly misfiring. Uh, I looked into a bunch of things before I looked at the timing chain because I was told that the timing chain had just been changed within 2,000 miles. Um, <laughs> but when I finally looked at the timing chain, I knew there was a problem. Let me show you how bad it is. All right, so I got the engine all opened up here. It was actually pretty simple. Um, getting the timing cover off, just pulling the pulleys off. Uh, the, a the AC compressor down there and the bracket for that was probably the hardest part, but the radiator can definitely stay in. I uh, just had to pull off the upper radiator hose, so I lost a little bit of coolant, but I didn't lose all the coolant. And I didn't have to disconnect my transmissions li transmission lines down there, so that's good. Uh, but this, uh, pfft, man, this engine is out of time. The uh, tensioners, the bottom tensioner, looks like it's completely failed. It's no longer putting any tension on the bottom chain. And so uh, let's see if I can show you here. Hopefully you can see the chain right here is extremely loose. And as I turn the engine, this side will become extremely loose. Uh, and this side will be tight. And it'll go back and forth depending on the rotation of the engine. So hopefully you can see uh, this is the crank. And you can see the timing marks there, or at least hopefully you can. Uh, those dots that are lined up. So the crank is lined up. But if we come up here to the cams, we can see that uh, there's a real problem. So you got your timing marks right here and one right here. And this mark is supposed to be lined up with this metal piece back here on this side. And this dot is supposed to be lined up uh, with this metal piece right here. So you can see that the chain constantly loosening and tightening and bouncing all over the place uh, has caused this engine to skip time. The main failure is this uh, lower tensioner, I believe. You can see that it's fully 
uh, retracted, so all the way in, not putting tension on the chain. So this is the new lower tensioner. Uh, it's spring-loaded. If I pull this pin out, this piston will come out and it'll be held in place by a ratcheting mechanism. And so this, this piston on the tensioner and on the vehicle tensioner here should definitely be pushed out some and applying pressure on the chain, but it's not. So I think that is the failure point here. So now I'll just take uh, out this tensioner, take out the other tensioner and guide down there, get the old chains off and uh, get the new sprockets on and all the new parts on and the chains lined up. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So I've got the chains off. I uh, mostly cleaned up my mating surface for my uh, timing cover. That's probably a good thing to do at this point with all this stuff out of the way, all the timing chain and all that out of the way. I just wanted to uh, show you really quick. So my kit came with a new uh, crank sprocket. Can you guess which one is new and which one is old? You can see on here that the surface is all scored up from the chain bouncing around. And then uh, also, I don't know if the teeth are worn or if they came that way, but on the old one, you can see the teeth are a little bit more rounded off than on the new one. Uh, again, I don't know where this sprocket came from, but um, this nice one that I got in the OSK kit is a made in Japan, so you know it's going to be good. And all of this timing stuff, including this uh, sprocket from the cam, I mean, not from the cam, from the crank, uh, it just pulls off. You can pull it off by hand. It's kind of a tight fit. Pull the little key out with a pair of pliers, and then uh, this will pull right off the crank. And everything else is, again, pretty self-explanatory. If you're doing this job, um, you must be pretty mechanically inclined. So I think you'll be able to figure out how to disassemble all this stuff. So it's been about a week since I worked on the uh, this engine here. As I was going back together, right when I started out, I found a big problem which uh, told me what the last guy messed up that did this timing chain less than 2,000 miles ago. So I was thinking that the lower tensioner was messed up and not functioning. And that's true, but that's not because the tensioner itself had failed. Uh, the arm here needs to be able to pivot on this stud right here. Uh, and what the last guy had done was he just took a nut and tightened it down on this arm. There's actually a spacer uh, that needs to go over the stud and in the arm. Well, I'll get it in there. But anyways, this spacer goes in there. So you can tighten the nut down and it allows this arm to continue to pivot. So the last guy left this spacer out, just tightened down this nut, and so this arm wasn't able to move. The tensioner wasn't able to function, which caused all of these problems. So don't forget to put this spacer back in, because also you can't just buy this spacer at a parts store, and it doesn't come with any uh, timing chain kits. I actually had to order this from Highway 83 Suzuki in uh, Wisconsin, uh, you're going to have to get it from a used engine, most likely, because you can't buy it anywhere. And on the old guide here, uh, I was just trying to put this spacer there, into there on the engine. It wouldn't fit. It's because this hole is actually um, all wallered out now, and the spacer won't go in there. Unlike in the new one, where the spacer drops right in, and you've got a nice, smooth pivot for that uh, for that guide don't forget that nut on stud and it can still move that's how it should work so I'll get this thing put back together and then show you how all the timing marks line up uh, one thing I want to mention is that to turn these cams uh, there's a hex back here if you have a 27 millimeter wrench that fits on there I'm sure probably a crescent wrench will work too, um, but that's so that you can get your cams lined up and everything. Uh, yeah, hopefully it works out. So remember when I said this isn't a how-to video, but more of a learn from my mistakes video? Well, here you go, time to learn. Uh, first of all, don't buy a Chinese timing kit. I'll show you why in a second. 
Uh, second of all, I disassembled this with the cams 180 degrees out of time. Uh, the crank, of course, turns uh, twice as fast as the cams, so the crank is in the right position, but the cams are 180 degrees out. Now, to the Chinese timing kit part of that equation. Here, this is what was on there, with one mark on the cam sprocket. This is what it's supposed to look like, with one mark at the 12 o'clock position, and then an arrow down here, just uh, close to the 6 o'clock position. So when this was on there, and there was one timing mark, I assumed that that timing mark would line up with the timing timing marks on the engine. That this one timing mark would be the timing mark. But no, no. Uh, the timing mark that's supposed to be there, this one at 12 o'clock on the, on the good sprocket, doesn't exist on this one. So I was confused and used this mark instead uh, of the one I was supposed to use. So anyways, the engine's 180 degrees out. Don't buy Chinese timing kits. So what I'm going to have to do now is make sure that uh, I turn the crank a little bit. I'm going to turn the crank a little bit to get the one and four cylinders down out of the way. And then I'm going to have to turn the the cams into the correct position. But uh, if you make this mistake, make sure you turn the crank a little bit and make sure that none of the pistons are at the top of their stroke because it is an interference engine. And if you turn the uh, cams with it like that, you could damage the valves. So we'll get that done, get these cams in the right spot, and then get this thing back together finally. All right, should be good. All right, this looks like it'll end up being much better. Now my arrow is at the top, and so I'll be able to align that chain link, the colored chain link, with that arrow. In case you're wondering, your cam lobes should be in this position, pointing up. All right, so I got all the timing marks lined up and, the, and both chains on. You can see on the crankshaft there, hopefully you're seeing it, the two dots line up and then the uh, keyway, the key right there with uh, that line, that lines up. And then you've got these timing marks right here, these two lines that line up with these two pieces on the engine. The arrows line up with the colored parts on the uh, the gold, not the gold, the blue uh, thing links on the chain. Unfortunately, I got really excited uh, about having both chains on and I went ahead and turned over the engine twice, which is what you're supposed to do after you get <laughs> both the chains on. So uh, also I torqued all the bolts and I will post the torque specs in the description so that you have those for yourself. They are in the Haynes manual uh, if you have access to that. Well, if you have access to the internet, you have access to the Haynes manual for this. But I'll post uh, the torque specs in the description just so that they're easy for you to find. Uh, but anyways, like I said, I turned the engine over twice, everything lined up, uh, so we should be good to go. And our bottom tensioner is able to work because I've got that spacer on the nut. So I'll get the timing cover put back on, all the accessories and the valve cover back on, and uh, we'll see if this thing will go over 55 miles an hour. Also, this is a great time to change your oil. Make sure you change your oil uh, when you do the timing chain. And of course, don't forget this part. All right, well, I can tell you this thing already runs a lot better, a lot quieter, a lot smoother. Now let's see if we can break the uh, speed record. All right, let's see if we can get this thing up to 55 miles an hour now.
Well, I'm pretty happy with that result. No more misfires and it gets over 55 miles an hour. That's great. Like I said uh, before, you could have that thing floored for a couple of minutes on a straight flat straight away and uh, it would barely get up to 55 miles an hour. And after looking at the condition of the timing chain and what was happening there, I'm really glad it didn't blow up the engine in the process of test driving it. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. hope you got something out of it. If you're doing one of these timing chains and you have any questions, uh, just let me know. And if I know the answer, I'll share it with you. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.